let's keep talking about Suns because we were we were talking in the last segment about uh, Chad Johnson. I'm disturbed by what you just said to me. Like I'm like, <laughs> I'm you, like you caught you... me like I I didn't see that. I didn't know that the plan you know that I the, the the plan that I know of is to bring everybody back and tweak around the edges, make some changes with the roster, and you know with go with those three guys. But I mean, James Jones has always been a if you don't want to be here, you're not going to be here guy. He has always been that way. I've had talks with him about it. If, the, if you don't want to be here, we, we don't want you here. If, if if Kevin Durant, for some reason, is, okay, I've had 10 days to think about this. When did they get eliminated? It was on a Sunday, wasn't it? I think it was on a Sunday. Yes, it was. So it's 10 days. I mean, it's 10 days since they've been eliminated. If he's had time to think about it, now he's people are asking him, well, what about Miami? Yeah, I would think about that. I would think. Okay, I mean, in some ways, that may be telling me that that he doesn't want to be here. Now, again, a lot of these rumors, if they they're not coming from the player or somebody really reputable, you could question them all day, and 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 that's fair. But this guy's saying, "How do you know?" I talked to him. I talked to I him. Spoke with him. Yeah, I, I, I asked him about it. I, I, I even asked him if I could mention this on my show, and he said yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. And, and and so it is. It's it's. It's concerning to say the least because it's going to not only there were going to be rumors anyway, there was going to be speculation about Kevin Durant anyway. But when you fuel it with something like this, right, when you bring something like this into the equation, it. Yeah. Mitch, will you hit it for me again just so we can hear it? one? What more makes time? you think he want to go to Miami now? Because I talked to him. I talked to KD and I know KD going to see this and KD can attest to this and you can talk about it tomorrow. On, on um, on first take, I talked to KD. KD had KD and I had a lengthy conversation. Listen, I'm not into basketball, and people like KD and LeBron and some of these other players that I know, they confided me, and I asked if it was okay to talk about it tonight on Nightcap, and just so happened, boom, it comes up. Sure. I want to hear yeah. KD's response to this. I, I want to know what Katie's going to do on social about this. I want to know what he's going to say, if he's just going to let it sit there and not say anything about it because you've got Chad somebody. Chad Ochocinco. Yeah. you got somebody. Claims that Durant wants to play in Miami. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I talked to him, they confide in me, and he'd have no problem coming down to Miami if it made sense. I mean, <laughs> I, know, right? I can just I can hear your brain going. Well, because I want to say, I, you know, I want to say, you know, until, you know, until we hear from him. But I get but, you know, who you if somebody says I spoke with the guy, how are you? How are you supposed to, you know, debate that? It, or, it's, it's hard to unless the player himself comes out on his Twitter or his ex or his Instagram or whatever and says that's absolutely absurd. I never told him any such thing. And then it becomes a he said, he said kind of thing. But if if we get none of that from Kevin Durant. If Kevin Durant just kind of lets it lie there, then you really – and look, this is yeah. – you have to wonder about the the truth of it all, and you have to wonder about whether this is Kevin Durant doing Kevin Durant things again, if this is Kevin Durant already starting to plant the seeds wow. for his next move. I feel like we've kind of been there and done that with him a little bit already. I, I will say it's it, – I don't know that it's like he's angling to come to Miami. It's just – because it did say the, the major words in there was if it made sense, you know, if it made sense – you know, I guess as an NBA player who's been around as much as he has, you, you know, you probably never shut the door on anything. You keep all your options open. If if he feels at some point that, you know, that this thing in Phoenix isn't going to work out, is, you know, would that make sense? Because that's what he's saying. If it made sense, he's not saying, I want to go there. I'm going to ask for a trade. Or, or He didn't say he hates it in Phoenix. He can't wait to go. He made a terrible decision coming there. Nothing like that. He's just, yeah. he'd be open to it if, it if it made sense. All right, let's talk about the other thing with the Phoenix. Well, a couple of other things with the Phoenix Suns. Yeah. Uh, thing number one, it's uh, Wednesday, May 8th, and we still haven't heard anything about Frank Vogel, which is, I, I, I don't know what to make of that other than, you know, at, at some point, it's. I was thinking about this driving in today. You know, at some point, we were all waiting around for Larry Fitzgerald to tell us he retired. And and he, he never did. He never did, right? The Suns yeah. don't have to tell us anything about Frank Vogel, I suppose. They could just say nothing, and it would mean he's coming back as the coach. It would. No, that won't happen. I know that, that won't. That, but that, it, that won't happen because at some point we kind of need to know, right? Like I don't know how much more why? you need to think about it. What, like why? But, but when? Like because you, you want to. There is no timeline. No, but I mean, you don't want to dangle him in the wind either. 
right? You don't want to leave him kind of hanging for a week and a half trying nope. to figure out whether he's got a job or not. That's not cool well, either. I mean, it's 10 days now, so there's a week and a half. That's what I mean. That's why I'm okay, saying it's I'm, Yeah. It, it's it's starting to get to the point where it's like, are, are you doing this or not? Because you've had, you know, it, it mm-hmm. not, not that I'm in any rush to know, but at the same time, if you're moving on, the cool thing to do would be to move on so that he knows he's being moved on from and he's not just kind of hanging out for – God only knows how long to figure out what his future is going to be, yeah. you know? Yeah, the last I heard, there was no real timeline. They were still evaluating some things. And, you know, does that make you think one way or another? And the answer for me is no. I'm not thinking one way or another. I mean, there's, are they potentially talking about the uh, p- potential to, like, change the coaching staff around quite a bit to give him more support? Because, you know, the, the coaching staff that he had when he won it with the Lakers, that's not the coaching staff you have here. It's completely different. Um, Kevin Young's gone. I mean, I just, you know, is you know, you've got to talk to the key players on the team. You've got to talk amongst yourself. You've got to, got to figure out if it's the right thing to do or not. I I understand what, uh, what you're saying is, like, you can't drag it out forever. But, I mean, if they make the decision tomorrow or Friday or Saturday, I, you know, I understand you don't want it to last three more weeks where – like you keep the, I mean, at some point you got to get, you have to be done evaluating. Yeah. And I'm just saying, it feels like by now they would have had time to do all of those things that you just said. But one more thing I want to play. This is Jake Fisher, NBA insider with Yahoo Sports, on Royce O'Neal and hypothetically signing him to a big contract so that you could trade that contract six months from now. A couple of people and a school of thought going around the league that like Phoenix, if the money thing isn't an issue. Phoenix probably will be best served massively overpaying Royce O'Neal, giving him some type of two-year, $40 million team option or a one-year deal like Bruce Brown got because because then you could trade him for two pieces back, which... That's going to cost sixty million in tax penalties if you're if you're paying r- roughly sixty. I don't know the exact math in front of me, but that's that is the ballpark of what that extra flexibility will cost you. Something else to consider. Thanks for watching Burns and Gambo. Click to see more from the guys and hit the button in the middle to subscribe so you never miss a video from Arizona Sports.